Hey guys, I just wanted to say something about gaslighting. Um, like in the physical and in the spiritual, gaslighting is a real thing. You could call it maybe organized bullying in, in the physical realm. Like, say you worked, and, and first, like, this is super common. Like, the spiritual aspect of it is super common. Um, with people, mostly people that are, you know, they're kind of know about God and they've looked into the Illuminati and stuff like that. And uh, Satan really messes with them, right? And uh, I think it's because they're like, he's trying to take them out because they're, they're kind of know about God. They're kind of trying to get close to God or whatever, but uh, you know, and, and they know, they know about the Illuminati. So it kind of freaks them out and then Satan plays on that. Right. But I, as somebody who's experienced both types of this to some degree, and as somebody who deals with hundreds of people in the street, one-on-one -on -one doing evangelism all the time, I can tell you that lots and lots of people suffer from this right so the first type of gaslighting is in the physical right and and you could just call it organized bullying right um say you're a christian and maybe say you've like spoken up about like witchcraft and freemasonry and all that stuff or or any any given thing even say you're like uh say you're like a contractor working for a company and there's another contractor that wants you out of there because they want all the work, they want all the money, and they have like a whole bunch of people, and they're friends with the with the client. <clears throat> they could, you know, if they're all buddies and they go out drinking and stuff after, and they're all buddies and they all talk or whatever, they could just mess with you on purpose, right? And that, that would be organized bullying, and that would be gaslighting in the physical realm. They could just mess with you and, and bully you on purpose. They say things to try and trigger you, to make you feel like, you know, to make you feel like uncomfortable and, you know, in, insecure or even scare you or something like that, right? And, and they'll do it in a way that you could never really say anything about it or you'll sound crazy. So in, in that, in all of these situations, the answer is always Jesus Christ. Um, People in that situation in the workplace, whether you're a Christian being persecuted or somebody that's not a Christian yet, the answer is always Jesus Christ to spend time in his presence, um, to read his word, to fellowship with Christ, real Christians that aren't going to do that kind of thing to you. They're going to speak life to you and help you. Um, so Jesus is always the answer for every scenario, right? But um so in the, in the physical, right, your, your best, the only thing you can really do if, if you need to keep that job or why, why I'm saying job is because the only time this can really happen in the physical is if you go to the same place and deal with the same people every day, right? Um, and, and I know because th this has happened to me to some degree because I am a Christian, I'm a very outspoken Christian and I have done lots to expose people and I tell people what I think, right? Um, but so, so the only thing you... What, all you have to do is just stay strong, focus on the Lord and fellowship with other Christians and don't let them get to you. You have to be rock solid. The Bible says, don't be surprised at the fiery trial you are going through as if something strange is happening to you, right? So that is, that is a good example of that Bible verse. Don't be, don't be uh, surprised at the fiery trial as if something strange is happening to you because something strange is happening to you. I mean, people in the world, in the workplace, in the oil patch, whatever, these people are completely under control of Satan. We know that unless they have encountered the Holy Spirit and made Jesus Lord and they're serving him, they are serving Satan. So these people are, are you know, they're demonized and they're, they're going to try and bully you, right? They could try and bully you. So don't be surprised at the fiery trial. Let it draw you closer to the Lord. If you're not a Christian, become a Christian. If you are a Christian with just some weird ideas and you're not really biblically sound and have a solid relationship with God, you have to get a solid relationship with God and fellowship with other believers that have that, right? Um, so Jesus is always the answer. In the physical, the other Bible verses, it, it actually says somewhere to look your enemy in the eye and have no fear. And that will be a sign to them that they are going to be destroyed even by God himself. 
right? So we're not supposed to have any fear. We're not supposed to cower to our enemies. So just brush it off and don't let it bother you and, and stick it out for as long as, as you need to and let it draw you closer to the Lord and closer to the body of Christ. And uh, God's going to use it all for good in the end, right? So that, that's the physical aspect of it. And that is real. You can Google it. It's a real thing. It happens in big corporations and stuff like that. So that's a real thing. But in that scenario, like in a big corporation in the workplace, something like that, or somewhere where you go all the time with the same people, where they could like have time to get to know you, have time to go out for drinks together and, and like really, you know, agree that they all want to mess with you and try to mess with you. That's really the only time that I can think of off the top of my head. There might be other ones, right? But that's really the only time I can think of that that stuff would happen, right? Um, and so, uh, unless, I mean, and, and here, the reason why I wanted to do this teaching is because I want, I know that lots and lots of people suffer from this, right? And so, to, to comfort you, I have friends with, like, the only time outside of that workplace scenario that people would organize to come against you to mess with you is if you had a large ministry and you were doing real damage. You know what I mean? And to, to comfort you... Um, or to comfort whoever you're going to share this with. I hope that whoever is watching will share this with people that are suffering from this, or maybe it'll help you to some degree. Um, so to comfort you, I have friends with big ministries with thousands of followers and their address is known to everybody. Everybody knows where they live. Anybody could come there at any time. They've exposed Freemasonry many times. And they, they, they're they solid Christians. They're preaching the gospel, doing major damage for God, God's kingdom, doing damage to Satan. And they have families. They're fine. There's lots of big ministries like that. Like, and, and this is where it ties into the, to the spiritual too, right? Like, I mean, almost everybody you talk to now knows about like they've at least heard about the Illuminati and conspiracy type stuff, right? And they've probably said something about it on social media. So that's that's millions of people, right? And these big, there's many, many big ministries. They have, you know, 100,000 followers, 50,000, 20,000, 10,000, whatever. And they've spoken publicly about Freemasonry, the Illuminati, witchcraft, all these type of people, right? And they've exposed them and they also are preaching the gospel, pushing back Satan. And those people at that level get some, they'll get probably some death threats or push back, you know, weird emails, weird stuff happen, but that's part of it. We are in a war, right? But I'm just telling you to comfort you that there's many ministries like that and they're all doing okay. They're all okay, right? They haven't been killed yet. Um, you know, nobody came and killed their kids yet. Nobody came and burned their their church or their ministry down, right? Uh, I, I think lots of ministries do get real death threats. For sure that happens. But, you know, so I'm making this video more for anybody who suffers from the spiritual gaslighting that demons do for the people in the workplace. But I, I just want to... Like the people, here, here's the thing. I, so, so I'm telling you about these big ministries, what they do. We know that big ministries, I have friends that get death threats and that's a real thing for sure. That's a real thing. And we need to be, need to assess it and deal with it properly. You know, when you're doing major damage to Satan, that's what that the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit's really moving, there will be trouble. That's the thing. There will be trouble. There will be pushback. We are in a war people right so so those guys i hopefully i hope and pray that they all understand this and you know if any of them see it one day maybe this will help them too just hearing my testimony and hearing about other people right but so i have friends who are ministers who deal with many people who think the illuminati's after them right and now I want to talk about spiritually individual people now that are just dealing with this spiritually. So I deal with hundreds of people in the streets. I know I have friends in ministry who deal with hundreds of people and they come across people that think this all the time. And I come across people who think this all the time, right? So 
These are just average Joe people who have looked into the Illuminati. They usually know something about God, so Satan's messing with them. But they're not fully committed to God, so they're not, they don't have that peace. You know what I mean? They're not mature Christians. They're just kind of being, they're just kind of coming out of the world. And hopefully they will get, you know, fully on board with the Lord. But I'm going to give you a few examples. Like the one guy I met the other day, this was his exact words. He's, he said the Illuminati has been chasing him for, or a, like he's been under surveillance for like nine years or something. And he was just an average Joe dude. No, probably not much money, probably not much influence. Probably doesn't know a lot of people, probably not even on social media. He might not even have like Facebook or anything like that. Right. And he said that I'm like, well, how do you know? Right. And he's like, well, for example, one time I was like laying on a hammock. I walked way out into the bush. I laid on a hammock and like I smelled this fruity smell and then a bear came around and then he said he walked out of the bush and there was a guy in the vehicle there laughing, right? So that that's one good example. Like if there's no way, like say I've met, I've met three people in the last couple of weeks that all told me the Illuminati is like surveilling them and, and following them around. And I know I have friends in ministry who deal with people who say this all the time too. And I have other friends who have friends that are saying this is happening to them, right? So do the math. Just from my experience and from my other friends' experiences, there's literally hundreds, if not thousands of people in every city who are, you know, just average Joe type people. They've looked into the, the Illuminati. They know something about God, but Satan is messing with them messing with them, completely messing with them, making them think they're under surveillance, right? And that people are watching them, say a, a car drives by and people laugh, are laughing about just something random. And this person looks and then those people look at that person and they're laughing. And then the person that's being tormented by Satan, we'll call it gaslighting, by ga gas, spiritual gaslighting by demons and Satan, that person thinks that they drove by and they're laughing at him which is not the case, right? And so, so back to this guy, right? He thought that the guy like walked into the bush, sprayed some fruity stuff at him so the bear would come at him and then waited for him to come out of the bush and just laughed at him out of the car, right? That is absurd. Nobody has time to do that. And if somebody wanted to mess with you that bad, like they wouldn't, come up to you, walk out to where you are in a hammock in the bush, spray you with fruity stuff and somehow have a bear like in the back of their truck and let the bear loose to come. And then you know what I'm saying? Like Satan can make you smell stuff. Flowers smell fruity. Sometimes there's lots of nice smelling things in the bush, right? And bears are in the bush. That's a natural thing to happen. And people sit in vehicles and laugh, right? And when you look at them, they look at you, right? So that's one good example. The next guy that I met just a bit later on, he said that said that he like came up and he was kind of interested in God, but he's like the Illuminati has been surveilling me for years. Right. And you start talking to him. They don't understand the Bible. They haven't really committed to God. They have looked into the Illuminati and they, you know, me and a group of friends are sitting there and like, I'm playing on my phone and my friend's doing something. And then, so this guy starts getting paranoid and tripping out he's like why are you on your phone and then he's asking my friend like why are you doing that why are you doing that and we're literally like just hanging out right like we don't mess with people we're christians we don't mess with people but this guy started like spinning out in his own head thinking that we were like videotaping him and then taking pictures of him and like texting back and forth and stuff and so that's another good example and you bump into people like this in the streets all the time and just do the math if you do the math that there's hundreds of people suffering from this in each city and we, we know that Freemasonry, witchcraft, all this stuff is real, but like those people don't have to be doing anything and they don't care about the average Joe out in the street. Like I said, everybody on social media pops off about the Freemasons and the, the Illuminati all the time now. Everybody knows about it, right? And the, the people who are involved in Freemasonry and, and, and Illuminati type people, they don't care about the average Joe. They definitely don't have time 
outside of a, co a big corporation type setting where you have to go into work every day, out in the normal world, in the day-to-day, -day, in the streets, in the grocery store, these people never would have enough time or care enough about you to like chase you around and mess with you and set up scenarios where they're going to try and mess with your mind, right? If they really cared about you that much, they would try and kill you, kill you or or fr like put you in jail or something like that. Like we know that guys back in the day got killed, Bill Cooper and like John Todd got put in jail and stuff like that. But those guys were like front runners, first people kind of exposing it when it really started to crack open and everybody started to find out about the stuff in North America, right? Those guys were making a massive difference and they were like the first ones, right? And so they, they did suffer from it. And, and it could be, you, you definitely could have some level of threat once you're, you know, you have like thousands of followers and you're doing consistent damage, but either way, the answer is God. We are not to live in fear. If we start to fear, Satan makes us like second guess and spin out in our mind. The answer is always to go to the Lord Jesus for prayer you know, have a brother pray for you. You go to the Lord in prayer and be filled with his spirit, get his righteousness, peace and joy and, and, uh, be se secure in him. Right. And we're not to fear, but it's just the average Joe in the streets. If you know somebody who's just an average dude that thinks he's under surveillance, or if you're watching, if anybody watches this one day and you think you are under surveillance, I'm telling you, unless you're doing major damage to Satan, you're nobody cares none of these people care because the like the stuff going on behind the scenes the big trillionaire people they have this this world is already under satan's control they, they don't care what you do it doesn't matter to them what you're doing they don't have time and they won't spend the money people are greedy people are busy those people are greedy those people are busy they do not have the time to follow you around set up scenarios just to mess with your mind if you're that big of a threat they would try to kill you and i'm telling you I have friends with big ministries who do mega damage to Satan and people know their address. People know where their churches are. People have like their stuff's all over the internet and they're doing just fine. I'll tell you a funny story about my own ministry. When I first became a Christian and I was looking into all that stuff, I like, I was like, wow, man, everybody has to know about this. It's super important, right? And I like, I made a, a long movie about my testimony and exposing false religions and exposing the Illuminati. And I, I made that and I posted it on YouTube and I mailed it to two, I mailed it to an entire city. And then I mailed it to a, a whole nother city after like two full cities. And then I went back to where those people were and they they were involved in it some of them were like 33rd degree freemasons and they were involved in it and they knew that i did that right and i went and spent a lot of time because i had to because it was a financial thing like thing for my work i had to be where they were and they knew that i did that so that's like 50,000 people got a letter in their mail right and they knew that i did that and i was just fine I have a YouTube channel right now. I go out and do full-time ministry. I preach the gospel. I have a small YouTube channel and I expose that stuff on there and I'm just fine. I'm just fine. If Satan still tries to mess with me sometimes, but I go and pray, you know, he'll try to make you second guess things you're saying or, you know, be scared to go out and preach. Uh, or think about scenarios that are frightening, right? And that's Satan's game. That's what he tries to do. But when you, so I'm telling you, I'm fine. I have done all these things and I am fine. If you are in a situation, God will protect you, right? We have to look to the Lord. But so I've dealt with it and I've dealt with it in a corporation type scenario because I have done that stuff. And I was that contractor that they wanted out of there. And I was that Christian that like they didn't like after a while. And I've had, it's a super scumbag, um, cowardly thing to do when people do this to you, like organized bullying. But I have had that happen to the point where it was so obvious, right? And I just, I didn't let it phase me. I prayed to the Lord and it made me stronger. It made me understand this stuff. And when I left, those guys all knew that I still loved them. 
even though they tried to bully me and tried to mess with me, they still knew that I loved them because I was still nice to them. Um, so, man, I'm, I'm kind of ranting, but it's, it's, it's kind of a hard thing to explain, but it's, it's important because it happens to so many people. And I'm telling you, do the math. There's thousands of people in big cities that are like, kind of average or maybe very poor, maybe coming out of addiction or suffer with addiction. They've looked into the Illuminati. They're kind of know about God. God's calling them. They're coming out. There's thousands of people like that who think the Illuminati is like surveilling them or chasing them, trying to set up scenarios to mess with them and stuff like that. And it's just, it's mathematically impossible. And I'm telling you, those people the Illuminati Freemason people, they do not care or have the time or the care to follow people around and mess with them. If you're being messed with, it's, it's Satan messing with you. You need to turn, surrender to Jesus Christ. You need to spend time in, in the word. Let him renew your mind. You need to worship and pray, pray and fast and, and have a brother pray for you. Seek deliverance, right? And get right with the Lord, you know, and... um so it's super important and it, it's very, very common. And I think I got everything that I was going to say. I just wanted to say something about it in case anybody's interested. And I, I want people to know that it is very, very common. And mathematically, it's impossible for that to be happening. But physical and spiritual gaslighting is re it's a real thing. People in big corporations will do it sometimes. Satan will always do it. And that's the other thing. A lot of, when you step up into ministry, Satan's going to do anything he can. So you don't necessarily need to have witches praying witchcraft on you. Satan's always going to try and pound on you anyway. Right. But that has to draw us closer to the Lord. That should make us pray more. It should make us read the word and fellowship with other believers more. Right. And that, that's, that's the correct way to deal with that. And that's what God wants us to do from that. And that's why he's letting it happen to us. Right. So, Anyway, hopefully that helps. Hopefully this helps somebody. And, you know, if you're if you're just any Christian and you think that people are saying stuff like, here's, you know, another aspect of it is just in your day-to-day -day life, people like, if you have a bigger ministry or whatever, you'll think that, you know, somebody said one thing one time that, that was like kind of to mess with you or... You know, just you'll meet random people and they'll say stuff and you'll think that they they know about you from somewhere else and they're saying stuff to mess with you. You know what I mean? Like you've done a bunch of big stuff on YouTube or whatever. And then you'll watch some other guy on YouTube or somebody will come up to you randomly and say something. You'll think that they're saying it to mess with you because it's something that you've said before or that you've dealt with before. That a lot of times that is Satan too. Like most people don't try to mess with other people, right? It's not like something that they try to do. It's just the way the conversation goes. So don't, don't let Satan mess with you that way either, right? Like, you know, especially with other Christians, other Christians aren't, I know that I'm not going to do that to people. So m most Christians should just be trying to hash out the real truth and be real with one another, right? Uh, and say what they mean. So if you're constantly having people come up to you and say stuff and you think that it's like they're doing it to mess with you, you might have to pray and fast too and have somebody pray for you and just stop thinking that way, right? Like, because Satan will try to, Satan really wants to try and break up the brothers and sisters, right? And, you know, so that's something that I think a lot of, of solid, even solid Christians deal with too, right? And it's just an attack from Satan, right? So Anyways, I hope that all made sense and I hope that it helps somebody and I love you guys and anyway, hopefully everybody's staying cool out there.